Hi everyone, this is Manu from Simba. Simba is a modern and super fast simulation environment for polytronics and motor drawings. And I'm here to get you started with it. The first thing we're going to do is to download Simba by going to simba.io. If you don't have an account, simply create one by clicking on the Get Started option. Otherwise, go to the login page, enter your login information, and once you're logged in, click on the download page. From here, click here to download the tool. Once Simba is downloaded, you can simply run the exe file. There is no complex installation or whatsoever. Simply enter your login information, and you're good to go. You are welcome by our welcome screen. From here, you can create a new project, open an existing project, browse a collection of design examples, and check our documentation. As you use Simba, you will see this list growing with shortcuts. Let's go ahead and open our example designs. The interface of Simba is divided into three main tabs, test bench, design, and results. Let's first explore the design tab by looking at our pre-made example. We have examples of simple converters, such as this three-phase dial bridge, this puck converter, or this flyback converter. We also have more advanced examples, like this PMSM full bridge drive, or this five-level NPC converter. In Simba, everything is about speed and simplicity and even those large converters are simulated almost instantaneously. In Simba, a single project file can contain multiple designs, results, and test bench. To learn how to build a circuit, we will create together a simple backboost converter. Let's add a new design and rename it Backboost. You will find in the Libraries tab all the models sorted in different libraries. Let's first add a DC voltage source. To add model to a circuit, simply double click on it or use the plus button. Let's add a control switch, an ideal dial. To flip or rotate a component, you can use the button like this. Let's now add the inductor, the resistor, and the capacitor. To connect devices together, simply click on the pin and drag until the destination. You can also click on a connector and use the plus sign. Let's add a PWM source to rename or change the parameters value of a model. Simply click on it to access the properties panel. Let's rename it PWM and let's use a frequency of 100 kilohertz. We'll have an inductance of 100 micro Henry. 10 microfarad for the capacitor, and maybe 5 ohm for the load resistor. In order to view the waveforms after the simulation, we have to enable the scopes in some devices. So let's look at the voltage in this resistor, the inductor current, and the PWM output. Before running the simulation, we have to set the simulator settings. We will use our predictive time step solver and we'll use a minimum time step of 50 nanoseconds. So we have about a maximum of 500 points per period. Uh, with our unique predictive time step solver, uh, don't hesitate to use a small time step like this or even smaller, uh, since it will not slow down the simulation significantly, but will keep a super high accuracy. I'll put a link to our solver documentation in the description of the video. End time of 5 milliseconds should be enough. Now it's time to run the simulation. I intentionally left an error in the design. So if I run the simulation now, I will see the error pop out in the console and I can click on it to know more about it. 
the design should have at least a ground device connected to a connector. Oh, I forgot the ground. Let's simply add the ground and connect it. Now I can run the simulation without ear. It's time to check our simulation results. The simulation results are listed on the left hand side of the simulation results tab. The top one with a pin symbol always point to the last simulation. So if I select signal here, they will be automatically replaced when a new simulation starts. On the toolbar here, different zoom options are available. I can also add cursors, run an FFT, and export uh, signals as an image or as a CSV format. Let's use the two cursor options to look at the peak-to-peak -peak, uh, voltage ripple on the output and the RMS value here. Something nice with Simba is the split view mode that allows you to have side by side your design and the result. So I can change, for instance, the capacitor values and look at the updated waveforms instantaneously. Simba includes a parameter sweep option that allows you to run multiple simulations with different parameter values. Let's go in the test bench tab and add a new parameter sweep test bench. Let's select our design, our PWM source, and let's change the duty cycle from 0 to 0 0.9. And let's maybe run 50 points. We'd like to have uh, the last signal value versus the parameter value. Let's now run the simulation, and we just run 50 simulations almost instantaneously. And I can now go in the parameter sweep and, for instance, look at the output voltage versus the duty cycle. All right, that's all for now. Feel free to contact us if you have any questions. Cheers and happy simulation.